Are we giving enough credit and recognizing Trey McKinney, either you like him or you dislike him, for his season on the Bassmaster Elites? That's what we're going to talk about right now. If you like this kind of content, make sure you hit that subscribe and like button. Become part of the team and family. I really do appreciate it. And thank you. Thank you for all the views. Thank you for humbling me. Thank you for all the comments. Thank you all to all the new members. Thank you to everyone. I really do appreciate it. But if you're not a subscriber, hit that button. Become part of the team and family. Without question, Trey McKinney is one of the most scrutinized anglers, rookie anglers, to ever join the Bassmaster Elite Series. But why? Well, I'm going to give you 10 or 11 reasons why people don't like him, but then I'm going to tell you why we should like him. To start off, he purchased waypoints when he was allowed to as an open angler, and that has caused a lot of controversy. Number two, he had a run-in with Gerald Swindle, and Gerald is recognized as one of the fan favorites. He's funny, he's good-looking, he's a great angler, but when you have a run-in with one of the biggest veteran anglers out there, it doesn't bode well for you. Number three, he ran that no motor zone on the St. John's River. He didn't listen to the video that told him where he could, where he could run, and it caused him a lot of grief. Four, he cut down trees. Five, he answered his mom's phone call when he was late and took a lot of grief about that. Six, he was penalized a lot. He lost some days' weights. He's lost uh, 45 minutes to uh, an hour and 30 to be penalized. He just seemed to be under the microscope at all times. Seven, and probably the biggest part of this, he's a forward-facing sonar dominating angler. People don't like forward-facing sonar. Everyone's theory is they can't catch him without forward-facing sonar. I think I'm going to prove you wrong on that one. Eight, not only did he win Rookie of the Year, he almost won Angler of the Year. That's insane. Nine, he became the new face of bass. And there's a lot of people and fans and anglers that believe other people should be given that title. We saw more coverage of Trey than probably anyone this year. And that doesn't sit well for veterans and fans who have their fan favorites. Ten, he had tons of polygraphs and he passed them all. And eleven, which I don't know this for sure, supposedly came from a very wealthy family. And we shouldn't hold that against him, but people do. He was catching and winning bass fishing tournaments before forward facing sonar became as dominant as it is right now. And really what he did in 2024 was absolutely insane. And we're not giving him enough credit for what he did. Now in a year when everyone uses forward facing sonar, we can only judge everybody by that level playing field. The people who used it, won a lot. The people who didn't use it are at the bottom of the barrel. And when you really dive into the year and what Trey did, it's absolutely fantastic. Now remember, he had one day on day two, his weight was completely disqualified when he answered that phone call. And that was on Smith Lake. And he had a 93rd place finish there. But if that doesn't happen, He's probably still in the top 10, top 15, because he had a solid bag on day two. And when you finish second in Angler of the Year points, and you're 24-ish points behind Chris Johnson, and getting a 93rd, it really shows how fantastic the whole year was for Trey. And I'm going to read it. He had a 12th, a 1st, a 6th, a 17th, a 6th, a 22nd, a 93rd, a 42nd, and a 3rd place finish. He finished off the year in second place for Angler of the Year, and he made over $250,000 as a rookie. And like I said, he's been winning tournaments and doing well since he was 11, 12 years old. There's pictures, and when you do a little bit of research, you find that not only did he have an amazing fishing coach that probably helped him learn how to fish properly, but you learn very quickly that he can catch fish anywhere. He's been taught to catch fish. And when you're brought up to become a professional fisherman, you have all the extras to learn how to do things properly, how to read the water, how to learn forward-facing sonar, how to win, how to talk, how to do it all. And then you get to the stage that is the biggest platform that there is, the Bassmasters Elite. And you accomplish what he did this year. Like him or dislike him, you have to give the young man a lot of credit. And there'll be a lot of people that are jealous and will are going to throw up 
It's all it's all forward facing sonar, Steve. I, I agree with you on that. But if you look at what he did versus all the people that he had to compete against, and all the people that are still using forward facing sonar too, your favorite person might use it and he might not. But what he's done this year is second to none. The elite field is as good as any field there is. They don't call it elite because it's second rate. The elite anglers are some of the best anglers on the planet. And Trey McKinney should be given some respect and be acknowledged for what he did this year. This has been a fantastic year. And we'll see how he does next year. He's going to have the classic. He's going to be, and he could be one of those people that you look at to say, he might win angler of the year. He might He's going to be in the mix to win fishing tournaments, unless something changes with four-facing sonar. And then, of course, we'll really see where he stands up. But I think we'll find out the kid can catch fish, and I say that in the nicest way. So, what do you think? Am I crazy? You can call me crazy. It's all right. But I think Trey has had a fantastic year that we're not acknowledging enough. So, comment below and tell me what you think. Remember, take your kid fishing. Get your fish on. I'll talk to you very, very soon. Cheers, and thank you.